In this lesson, we're gonna take a look at six reasons why you should consider drawing on toned paper. Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in our current live lesson series which is available to members at TheVirtualInstructor.com we're drawing a wonderful rhinoceros using a combination of graphite and white charcoal on toned drawing paper. But what is it about this combination of media and more importantly the surface that we're working on that leads to such representational results? Is it true that this combination of media can actually improve your drawings, improve your drawing skill overall? in fact, even enhance your painting skills and also improve your speed? Well, the answer is yes. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the six reasons why you should try drawing on toned paper if you haven't already. We first need to ask the question, why is drawing paper white? If you walk into any art store and you go down the sketchbook aisle, you'll likely notice that all of the sketchbooks, or at least most of them, are filled with white sheets of drawing paper. But at the very end of the aisle, you'll probably notice a stack of toned or colored drawing papers. You'll notice a variety of grays, browns, earthy tones, and also some colors. Now, if you ask a store employee, what are these papers for? They'll likely answer that they're for pastel, and they're partly right. Of course, these papers usually feature a heavily tooth side or a side that has a heavy texture associated with it and another side of the paper which is a little bit smoother. Now these papers are designed of course the heavier tooth papers for accepting pastel applications but the truth is you can use any combination of drawing media on these surfaces and using white and black or dark drawing media on these surfaces can really stretch your drawing skills. During the Renaissance and the Baroque period, artists such as Michelangelo and Peter Paul Rubens commonly drew on light brown or light gray paper, not in pastel, but in ink, charcoal, Conte crayon, and many other forms of drawing media. So it's not uncommon to work on toned drawing paper. In fact, as we see, some of the old masters worked on toned drawing paper to create their drawings. But why is this? What's the advantage of working on toned drawing paper? The first reason we should consider drawing on toned paper is that it often leads to more realistic results. A good friend of mine had a drawing instructor that said, there is no white in life. There is the sun and everything else is darker than that. His point was that our artwork should have little to no pure white in them in order to create a more realistic and convincing illusion in our drawings. Therefore, if your paper is darker than white, then you avoid by default one of the main reasons why some drawings look unrealistic. An otherwise accurate drawing may seem unfinished to the viewer if too much of the white paper lies bare. Take a look at these two drawings of an eye. Both of them are rendered in a realistic manner, but which of the two looks more realistic to your eyes? It's easier to push a drawing darker when working on toned drawing paper, and then you can add highlights if you wish with intention, leading to a more realistic appearance in your drawings. The second reason to consider drawing on toned drawing paper is that it's easier to hide mistakes. Let's face it, mistakes are part of the drawing process. It's inevitable that you're going to create mistakes and you're going to need to do some erasing. Now, when you're working on a white drawing surface, of course, those eraser marks are a little bit harder to hide, but working on toned drawing paper makes it a whole lot easier to hide those eraser marks. Mistakes made in the primary stages of a drawing on toned paper are just simply easier to hide. It's not magic, it's about contrast, or rather a lack of contrast. Your dark marks on white paper stand out more than those same marks would on gray paper. When you erase those marks from a toned paper, any material left on the sheet is likely to melt away into the value of the paper and the later stages of your drawings. The third reason to consider drawing on a toned surface is that it increases your speed. Today, many artists work from photographic references, of course, but before the advent of photography, artists had to be very quick with their sketching. They often had to fight against the sun, of course, which was always changing their light, or the fatigue of a model. So sketching quickly was a must, and drawing on toned surfaces increases our speed. Using toned papers allow us as artists to save time. We can shade in the darks, use white for the highlights, and allow the paper to do the rest. 
Unfortunately, the contemporary habit of drawing from photographs promotes a more sluggish approach, but drawing on toned paper can counterbalance the effect. You can see here in this drawing, although there's a lot of material on the surface, you can still see bits of the gray showing through. The gray of the paper is working to create some of the values on the subject. The fourth reason to consider drawing on toned paper is that it enhances our painting skills. You see, when we start on a white sheet of paper, we're starting at one extreme of the value scale. We're constantly making values darker as we go through the process. But when we paint, we start with a palette filled with a multitude of different colors and values. And during the painting process, we're constantly adding both light and dark values, pushing the value range. So drawing on toned paper becomes a valuable bridge between the process of drawing and painting, and thus will enhance your painting skills. The fifth reason to consider working on a toned surface is that it helps to unify your composition. Now, unity is one of the guiding principles of art and design. It deals with a feeling of oneness or cohesiveness across the composition. When we work on a toned surface, it helps to ensure that we create harmony and unity in our art. This is especially true if we work on a colored surface. Little specks of color showing through the medium on top will undoubtedly help to unify your composition. Working on a colored surface also helps to convey a sense of mood in the piece as well. The sixth reason to consider drawing on a toned surface, and perhaps probably the most important reason, is that it encourages a full range of value. Value is the darkness or lightness of a color. It's one of the seven elements of art, and in my opinion, it's the most important element of art. Value tells us about the light source, it tells us about the form of the subject that we're drawing, it also is used to create the illusion of texture in a drawing. It's incredibly important. And in most of the drawings that we create, if not all of them, we want to create a full range of value, meaning we want to have the lightest lights, the darkest darks, and all the middle values in between in the drawing. When we work on a white surface, of course, we're starting at one extreme of the value scale, and we're constantly pushing the values darker. When we're working on a black surface, we're working on the other side of the value scale and pushing the values lighter. When we work on a tone surface, we're starting somewhere in the middle of the value scale. This allows us to push the values both lighter and darker throughout the drawing process, and in the end results in a fuller, more broader range of value. This of course leads to a more realistic drawing in the end. So there you have it, six reasons to consider drawing on a toned surface. If you've never tried it before, I highly encourage you to try it. The six reasons we covered are, of course, it often leads to more realistic results. It's easier to hide mistakes. It increases your speed. It enhances your painting skills. It helps to unify your composition, and it also helps to ensure that you create a full range of value in your drawings, which is incredibly important. Now, if you're new to the channel, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free to do so. We cover a broad variety of drawing and painting subjects and mediums here on this channel. If you want to check out three of our course videos and ebooks for free, you can do so. There's a link in the description below. And if you want to check out our fantastic membership program, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses, which include videos and ebooks, weekly live lessons, access to our vault of recorded live lessons, weekly critiques as part of the members minute, lesson plans. In fact, there's a full year of, of lesson plans for visual arts teachers. I'll leave a link in the description below. You can check that out as well. Thanks again for watching this video. And as always, I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.